is the Bible for mixed bathing. In other words, multiple people bathing at the same time without their clothes on, obviously. Um, going to look about that in this study. Uh, for a while now, I've been in, interested in the subject of a sauna. All right, if you don't understand what that is, it's a, a lot of people say sauna, but sauna is not actually the right way to say it. It's sauna, uh, sort of like sauerkraut, S-A-U, sau. So the, you know, it's mostly Finnish, um, but there's, you know, in Russian, it's banya. Um, but uh, Swedish, Finnish culture, they're very big into the sauna um, thing. And it's essentially a small room with little wooden benches and things in it. And you get some good heat and um, you pour, you know, water on rocks and the steam uh, basically makes you sweat and it really heats you well. And um, then you go from that outside and you can dip in a lake or you can take a shower or whatever else. A very big thing, very much a healing, cleansing type of a thing. You're supposed to sweat. Um, that's definitely in scripture. You're supposed to make your living by the sweat of your brow. Uh, sweating is very good. It's part of detoxing. So sauna is a very smart thing, a very smart uh, or a very healthy um, thing. Um, but the question is, in some traditional sauna culture, you might have a large number of people all in that sauna at the same time. And not just, you know, family, which would, there's issues with that. We'll get into the scriptures. But also with extended family cousins and aunts and uncles and whatever else. Um, what, so what does the Bible say about this? Does the Bible condemn the idea of a sauna? Well, the answer to that is obviously no. But what about mixed bathing? And it's not just sauna either, by the way. Um, <clears throat> it's also uh, showering. Um, back when I was a young man, a teenager in high school, they, would, they had this big room for showering and you know, the, all the students could, all the boys there could you know, shower at the same time. And it was always, you know, we'll give you extra credit if you take a shower after gym class is over. And, and I just always thought, no, no, you know, I'm not going to shower with a bunch of other guys. And very few of the boys in my class, very few of them would go and take a shower afterwards. It was just sort of uh, not really interested here. Uh, no, thank you. You know, <laughs> so there's different ways of doing public bathing. Of course, you would also have public baths as well, steam baths and, and things like that. I know over in Europe, it's a, uh, there's different places where you can go and you can actually take, you know, public bathing and you're basically with, you know, you have no clothing on. So we're going to be doing a study on the thing of nakedness and while bathing, if that's correct or not. Um, and I, like I said, I've been studying this sauna thing and I read two books here recently on it. Um, this one here, the, the Finnish Sauna uh, by John O. Vertanen. Um, some interesting things I learned in there. And I took a marker and I you know, gave all the different uh, naked people swimming suits. <laughs> so uh, you say, how puritanical of you. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Um, and then this one here, The Opposite of Cold, uh, another good book. I read some interesting things there, and they talk about the different types of sauna. Okay, there are three basic types if you want to study it, and that is um, the oldest style is, um, pr I, uh, forgive me if I pronounce this wrong, but savu sauna, which means basically smoke sauna. And um, that doesn't mean you go inside there and you're, there's smoke everywhere or something. No, it just simply means that it's a sort of a uh, stone, kind of a um, little fireplace type of deal and then a bunch of stones on top of that and then you heat up all those stones up on top and there's smoke all throughout the building and then you let the smoke out um, and then you pour water on to purify the stones get all the ash and all the toxic stuff off of it and then the stones retain the heat from all that fire and it takes you know anywhere from eight or nine eight to nine hours to do this you know according to what a lot of people are saying and then you go in after all the smoke's out and then you can have the sauna experience in there. That's the traditional old way to do it. And then they came up with the um, like firebox, the wood stove made out of steel. 
and then with stones on top, that's a little bit more efficient, um, not quite as dangerous. And then you have the newer type that are actually electric, all electric. And there's some others that some are gas, but that's not quite as common in whatever, from what I've read. And um, so some interesting stuff. Um, but we'll talk a little bit about some of this to, in today's study. But um, what does the Bible say about nakedness? Okay, Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, we'll start in the beginning of the Bible and then we'll go to the end of the Bible and see what the Bible has to say about nakedness throughout the Scriptures. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 through 25. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he um, a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and they shall cleave un and, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So before the Garden of Eden, they were naked together there, but there was no shame, because sin hadn't come yet. So what does that mean? That means that there's shame now associated with nakedness because of sin that came into the world. And we'll see that all throughout Scripture. Revelation chapter 17, we'll go to the last reference to nakedness. People that are naked. Revelation chapter 17, verse 16 through 18. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. Um, so you have there, uh, okay, verse 18, and the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Look down my notes, I saw verse 18 too. <laughs> it's a city. So spiritually it's talking about that, uh, Again, it's a judgment type of a thing, and she's made naked. The city is made naked and destroyed. It's a bad thing, in other words. Now, obviously, everybody at some point in time has to take their clothes off when you take a shower or whatever else. But that should be a very private thing. That's the point here. Um, you can take a sauna. You can take a bath. You can take a shower. But it should be private. You know, and the only one that you ever have any business, you know, having seen seeing that is a husband, if you know, you're know you a woman, you have a husband, he can see you without your clothes on, obviously. You kind of have to do that to make children, you know? And uh, the same thing, you know, if a wife sees her husband without his clothes on and the husband sees his wife without her clothes on, well, that's perfectly fine and sanctioned by Scripture. But that's about it. That's about as far as it goes. You say, what about a doctor? Well, my wife is my doctor. So uh, natural health belief uh, that we have uh, we don't really go to the, um, we'll kill you for a, a fee, you know, doctors out there with their witchcraft pills and whatever else. But that's my opinion. I'm not offering medical advice. <laughs> Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. I have to put in my disclaimers here on Goonie Tube. Uh, Revelation 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. So we see the opposite here. Like I said, Genesis chapter 2, they're there. It's before sin, before the fall. There's no shame. Now, if you walk naked, people will see your shame. I remember one of the stories in one of these two books here, I forget which one it was, but there was a story a little girl said when she was growing, or an older woman, she said, when I was growing up, she said, we had this whole family thing and everybody came over and we were all doing sauna together and then we walked outside and everybody standing around without their clothes on and she said, I just felt really embarrassed about that. I just was kind of trying to, you know, not look at, you know, the men in their private area and, and there's, you know, she's describing what she's seen with her mother and her aunts and things and just, you know, uh, everywhere you look, it's just, okay, yeah, you know, there's shame there. You say, well, no, we've, we're, uh, 
we're very wise and we're we've, we're beyond that. We you know we aren't going to um, be uh, made to feel ashamed of our nakedness. We are evolved people. You know it doesn't bother us. No, actually you're lesser. Okay. Um, I love my brethren in in the Europe and everything else. You can go to Revelation chapter three a while. Love my brethren in Europe, but if you're in a country where you're getting together and there's a, a lot of uh, public nudity and whatever else, um, there's a shame there. There's a shame that should be there. And we'll talk about that as we continue. Revelation 3, verse 14 through 19. And under the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Is nakedness a good thing? No. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Well, Brother Brian, you know, I'm, I'm a traditional Swedish. You know, I live in Sweden, and, and we've done sauna for, you know, all my life, and I'm just, I'm not used to the thing of having to cover myself up. It's just not a big deal to be zealous, therefore, and repent. The shame of the, thy nakedness is not supposed to appear. You say, well, it's just talking spiritually and whatever else. Well, we'll see about that as we continue. Uh, no, it isn't. It's not talking about just spiritually. I mean, you know, okay, say it this way. Um, it's not a shame for me to be seen by other people in a sauna type experience or public showers or whatever else. That's not a shame. But if I, all of a sudden, I'm out here on my sun porch here at the ministry office, would it be a problem for me to take my clothes off right now, let everybody driving by, look and see what's going on? Well, no, that would be shameful, but a sauna type of thing. I could, I could invite my neighbors over to a sauna experience, but I couldn't be naked in front of them here while they're driving by on the street. You see, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and if it's a pagan type of a thing that you're doing uh, as a culture, you have to be enlightened by the scriptures. And the Bible says, shame of thy nakedness. You shouldn't be naked in front of other people. It's just that simple. You know, I heard of a, actually heard a story. This um, this uh, uh, Russian guy was telling a story in the one time he was talking about in the military, and they went and they were some um, nightclub or something where the uh, the British soldiers were at, and he said he went in there and he said all the guys, all the soldiers, they were all naked. None of them had any clothes on. And they're getting drunk and whatever else and things. And he said there wasn't anything, you know, perverted, openly perverted going on, but they were just all naked. Didn't have any clothes on. You know, you have to do this so we can trust you. That's perversion. That's wickedness. It's paganism. It's heathenism. Um, as a, as, you know, people that at least understand that this is the Bible and that there is a God and whatever else. I'm not saying they even have to be saved, but common sense should tell you it's a shame to be naked. And you say, well, we're just beyond that. We're so evolved. We're so much better. Okay, then just walk naked down the street. You see, it's, it's not logical. It's not a logical argument. We're okay with nakedness and bathing, but out in public, no. Well, we shouldn't do it there. But you are doing it in a public place. You are doing it in front of other people. See, so it's hypocritical. Um, now we'll go back to Genesis chapter 3. And if you haven't picked up what I do with my studies, um, I do word studies primarily. Um, I pick a subject and then I go and I see, I let the Bible speak for itself. It's not about me being lazy and all I do, he just picks a word and does a whole word study. No, because I don't go every, over every reference and I'll jump around a lot through the scriptures and think about you know, scriptures that relate to a word that I'm studying. But I always want to make sure that it's the Bible that does the speaking. It's the scriptures. So the subject of public bathing is related to people that are naked. Look up the word naked. See how many times it shows up. 
how does it show up? Is there, are there ever any positive references to it? And if the answer is no, then you better quit doing it. Genesis chapter 3, uh, verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked. Huh. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Why? <laughs> Why? Uh, because for the first time they realized it was a shame to be naked. You say, what did their neighbors think? They didn't have any. What did their co-workers think? There weren't any. Uh, relatives? No. No. Did you realize the only two people on the earth at the time were Adam and Eve? They're in the Garden of Eden. There's nobody else around. And yet something natural says it's a shame to do this. Oh, unless you're with a party and you're you know, going to get a little bit drunk and whatever else, then you can all just stand around with out anything on and just pretend that we're so evolved we can uh, do this and it doesn't even bother us it's nothing sexual about this please um, verse 8 unless you know you've so seared your conscience that there's no no feelings or no looking or whatever yeah and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Hmm. So it's a natural thing to say, I hid myself. I'm naked. I, I have to hide. Do you ever have one of those dreams where you're going around and you don't have, you know, you have a shirt on or something but nothing down underneath that and you're running around trying to pull the shirt down and trying to find a pair of pants and nobody has a pair of pants or something? I've had those types of dreams, you know. Probably means something with psychiatrists. I have a low self-esteem or something like that or, you know, I was, uh, wasn't given enough lollipops as a child or something, you know, or whatever. <laughs> but there's shame associated with nakedness. And if there isn't, there's something wrong. Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9, verse 20 through 23. Let's read that. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. And Shem and Japheth took a garment, and laid it upon both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father, and their faces were backward when they saw not their father's nakedness. Now it's interesting, they did what was right, and later on it's given as, as part of the Levitical law, and yet they did something in the Levitical law before the law was even written. We'll see about that as we continue in this study here. Um, but I just want to address something that Peter Ruckman has taught, and I don't agree with it, and that is, that Ham actually committed sodomy with his father. Um, that's why when Noah wakes from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him, um, then, oh, let's see, it was a sodomite thing. Then he curses Ham's seed, see? So, uh, no, I'm sorry. He was very wrong on that. You know why? Because that's not what the text says. He saw the nakedness of his father, and he went out and he said, hey, <laughs> dad's in there and he doesn't have a any clothing on it just ridiculous what a, what a, an old drunkard man and they said hey, don't shame dad like that don't shame our father ham and they took the a blanket and they put it on their shoulders and they t went back in backwards and they laid it over top of their father noah was you know he was sleeping but you can tell some of the stuff that's going on so that teaching of that there was a sodomite act there or whatever else? No, there wasn't. And you'll see this thing through the scriptures too, by the way. Our society right now is so perverted, so corrupt, that we have to come up with all these different things and all this stuff. Oh, you know, that must have been sodomy. And Satan, when he beguiled Eve, that must have meant that they had, you know, fornication and, and oh, that's why there's a seed of it. 
No, it's a lot less evil than all that stuff. Okay, we don't have to make the Bible, the evil of the Bible doesn't have to be comparable to our evil today, per se. We're a lot more evil and a lot worse than they were even back then. Um, the text says, he went in, saw his father's nakedness, and went out and told his brethren without. It does not say anything about a sodomite act. So, you want to believe that? Well, go ahead. But it's, it's unscriptural, it's a heretical teaching, and it's just a perverted mind putting that into the text. Sorry, Ruckman was very wrong on that point. I just need to, to clear that up. And I even have, um, you know, I even have right there in the side margin here written as sodomy, you know, and I have the done unto him highlighted there, you know, so this shows you how messed up I was by Peter Ruckman. Um, had some good stuff. I'm not saying Ruckman was a heretic and burn your Ruckman commentaries or anything else. I'm not saying that, but uh, be very careful. Stand by the scriptures, brethren. It doesn't say that he sodomized him. He saw him and he went out and he told his brethren without. That's a shame. Okay. Leviticus chapter 18. We'll go to Leviticus chapter 18. And uh, we'll see some of the things here. Le Leviticus chapter 18. Beginning in verse 1. And here you're going to actually see the law given to Moses. And it talks about this thing of not uncovering a relative's nakedness. Now, there's just no way. You can, when we get through this passage, the whole idea of a sauna or mixed bathing or, you know, have a hot tub and everybody gets in it together or something without anything on. No, no, it's not there. It's not justified in Scripture. I'm going to prove it to you. Um, if you are doing it after this, after we go through all these scriptures, then you're not right with God. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land, and by the way, let me just stop there. You say, well, it's all Old Testament. It's under the law. It's it. We'll get to the New Testament. So just stick around. Verse 3. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, which I, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. The pagans like to do mixed bathing. And the Lord's saying, no, you're not going to act like that. Verse 4. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which I which if a man do, he shall live in them, I am the Lord. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. The nakedness of thy father or the mother, the naked, or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. The nakedness of thy sister, the daughter of thy father or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. The nakedness of thy son's daughter or of thy daughter's daughter, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's wife's daughter, uh, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister, she is thy father's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister, for she is thy mother's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother, thou shalt not approach to his wife, she is thine aunt. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law, she is thy son's wife, thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife, it is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, neither, neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are her near kinswomen. It is wickedness. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her to uncover her nakedness beside the other in her lifetime. Um, I don't think the Lord's too keen on people uncovering others' nakedness. You know, it doesn't say a thing in there about you won't, won't, don't uncover your wife's nakedness or something. No. You know, if you're a man, don't uncover your husband's nakedness if you're a woman. It doesn't say that. But everything else, strictly forbidden. 
Obviously, if you have a little baby or something, you have to uncover their nakedness to change their diaper. But what I'm saying is when they get to a certain age, hey, no, you don't see my nakedness, I don't see your nakedness. You bathe yourself, you take care of yourself, you go to the bathroom by yourself. You get really sick or something like that and need some help, well, that's one thing. You know, obviously, if they can't take care of themselves. But family get-togethers in a sauna, family get-togethers and it's all shower together or something like that, or just swim skinny dipping at the lake or something? No. No. Absolutely forbidden in Scripture. Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 17. And if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and see her nakedness, and she see his nakedness, it is a wicked thing, and they shall be cut off in the sight of their people. He hath uncovered his sister's nakedness, he shall bear his iniquity. Now, I know what the reason I read this verse is because people will say, well, Leviticus chapter 18 is about uncover in the sense of you're uncovering the nakedness to then have incest or some form of fornication. Um, well, that's there, certainly, a sexual connotation with the thing of uncovering nakedness. But this text right here, Leviticus 20, 17, is just saying, see the nakedness. Again, you know, people try to make it into this. Well, it's, it's all about the act of fornication that comes with uncovering nakedness. No, the Bible's so strict, and people in the past were so much more righteous than wicked perverts now, that just even seeing the nakedness of a relative. You're not supposed to do it. It's not supposed to be there. Look away. 2 Samuel chapter 11. Go to 2 Samuel chapter 11. <clears throat> now we'll start getting into some more of the uh, actual events of people seeing others' nakedness and what it led to. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 through 5. And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Reba. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eli Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David, and said, I am with child." That's the right term, by the way. It's not pregnant. Okay, I am with child. It's a baby in there, a child. Not a fetus that can be aborted. little side note there. But um, there was some public bathing. She didn't uh, do that in private someplace. Bathing up on top of the roof of the house. Oh, it was so pretty. The stars were out and everything else. Yeah, well, shouldn't have been doing that. But what did it lead to? A perverted act. And God actually killed the child that was born of that wicked relationship. And, you know, he goes on and you study the whole story. David goes on to kill her husband. Then he takes her to be his wife. It was a very wicked thing, and God pours out his judgment on David for that. And, you know, I've seen it in the, in the books there. Oh, when they're naked together, it's, there's no perverted stuff and whatever else. Um, uh, I'm a red-blooded man. And there are women that have uh, very good bodies to be very plain and whatever else. And um, I see that stuff at stores and whatever, and I see it and I just, uh, uh, no, flee fornication. Um, abstain from all appearance of evil. You know, as far as fornication being an evil thing, they're dressing to get attention to their bodies. I'm not looking. I don't want to look. Why? I'm a married man. Well, it doesn't hurt to look. Yes, it does. If you look in lust... You've committed adultery with her already in your heart. David shouldn't have looked. Okay, if he looked over, oh, oh boy, oh, okay, that's some other guy's wife. Better not look back. But, you know, it's okay to just go and do some kind of public bathing thing, mixed bathing. Oh, there's my neighbor's wife, you know. Oh, okay, I'll just, 
I'll look at her face. Don't tell me that you can just sit there. Oh, okay, yeah, we're here in this thing sweating together or whatever. Or we just go out, you know, the women go in first and the men go in first or next and then they, they all go out. They just kind of mix together and things. Um, we have a property in our area that the guy actually was Swedish that built it. And there was a sauna that he built. Three room sauna, the shower room, the sauna room, and then the sort of the cooling down room or whatever else you get dressed there, I guess, too, if you wanted to. But he had a bar in there and kind of party area and a fireplace and everything else. And um, you know, I don't even know what kind of perverted stuff went on there, but I know that you know, a neighbor or two told me, he said, yeah, it was just perverted stuff there. He had a hot tub and people out walking around without their clothes on and everything. And it was known as a perverted place. Oh no, it was just, there, there wasn't anything perverted going on. They were just all experiencing things and just sharing. And I feel no shame at all standing here without my clothing on. And, and there's women here and whatever else. And, I can look at their bodies and I don't feel anything. Well, then something's probably wrong with you. Um, I avoid that stuff. And you're smart if you do too. Um, people come in and, and having a sauna and then they go out, they have towels around the area there or wearing a swimming suit or something like that. Okay. If it's relatives or something or friends or family or I don't know, you know, you can, I mean, I pretty much stay away from that too in terms of friends and, and family, but um, I'm not against bathing. I'm not against showers. I'm not against a sauna, but cover up your nakedness. Just that simple. Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32, beginning in verse 25. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. Um, you see, well, Brian, it, it was about the idol worship, the golden calf. It wasn't about the nakedness. Uh, yes, it was. it was. It made them naked. That's what it says in context. There's a great shame there. And when you have public nudity and everybody's dancing around naked and, how, oh, there's no problems here, it leads to the wrath of God coming upon the people. Perversion. And you know, it's an interesting thing. I've studied a lot of different religious cults, be they the Branch Davidians or um, there's a Celestia, I think is another one I've just read about not long ago, um, that there were these people trying to build this city back in the 1800s. I think Charles Taze Russell was actually involved in this cult before he went on to the, found the uh, Jehovah's Witness thing. Um, the Oneida, Oneida silverware, they were... Um, the perfectionists or something like this or perfectionism or whatever else it's all involved in perversion all of these david koresh had a revelation from god that he was supposed to raise up children to each man's wife and that the men weren't allowed to touch their wives anymore and yet every time you get around this this thing this thing of you know nudity and nakedness and whatever else it starts to lead to perversion problems don't mess with it Isaiah 20, do the sauna, okay? There's some really good health benefits to it, but don't let your nakedness be seen by other people. Isaiah 20. You say, but all my relatives, you know, we've been doing this for years, you know? I don't understand what we're supposed to do. I mean, it's not ever been a big deal. We'll say I'm a Christian now. I don't believe in being naked with other people and I don't want to see other people's nakedness. And so you go in, you do your sauna. I mean, it's only five to 15 minutes usually that you're in there. It's very hot. You go in and then you come out and you cool down and you can go back in or whatever. There's different ways of doing it. Um, but hey, you go and you do your thing. I'm, I'll go in next. But I don't want other people in with me when I'm doing that. I'm a Christian now. I think that, you know, I'm ashamed of the nakedness here. That's another thing, okay? Get 
back to the text here in just a minute. Um, as a Christian, you should be ashamed of your body. You should be ashamed of the flesh there. Well, I'm proud of my body. I, I work very hard to sculpt my body and to make it look really... Huh? Why? I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Just look at yourself sometime. I look at myself and I think, that is weird. I am developing wrinkles on my hand like I used to see my grandparents would have. This wrinkled hands and things. I look and I think, man, I'm getting some wrinkles here and bags under my eyes. And, you know, proud of my flesh? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and I want to go and this scarred up old body and, and just show it off to my neighbors or something like that? No, no. No, thank you. You want other people seeing you when you're in the shower or when you're doing a sauna or some public bath thing or just all skinny dipping down? The no, no. Not as a Christian, I don't. Isaiah chapter 20, verse 1 through 6. And the year that Tartan came unto Ashdod, when Sargon the king of Assyria sent him and fought against Ashdod and took it. At the same time spake the Lord by Isaiah the son of Amos, saying, Go and loose the sackcloth from off thy loins and put off thy shoe from thy foot. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. And the Lord said, Like as my servant Isaiah hath walked naked and barefoot three years for a, for a sign and wonder on, upon Egypt and upon Ethiopia, so shall the king of Assyria lead away the Ethiopians prisoners and the Ethiopians captives, or excuse me, Egyptians prisoners and the Ethiopians captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks uncovered to the shame, shame of Egypt. Hmm. And they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation and of Egypt, their glory. And the inhabitant of, the, of this isle shall say in that day, behold, such is our expectation, whether we flee for help to be delivered from the king of Assyria, and how shall we escape? Um, now, God has called me to be a preacher, and I want to be the greatest man of God that I can possibly be according to the grace given unto me. Fine. The Lord says, give this up or do this or do that. I'm going to try my very best to follow him and to, yes, sir, yeah, I'll do that. Um, but I hope he never puts that one on me, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Hey, uh, just go ahead and take your clothes off and walk around as a judgment on people for three years. I mean, he couldn't do it to me here. I'd freeze to death in the winter, but and you get, you know, uh, the blood all drank out of me by the mosquitoes and the black flies in the summer. But, um, wow. So why would God do that? Um, because he's trying to show people that they should be ashamed of nakedness. It was a sign saying, this is going to be you because you're not repenting. It's judgment. Isaiah 47. Isaiah chapter 47, verses 1 through 3. Come down and sit in the dust, O daughter, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal. Uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg. Uncover the thigh. Pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. Um, hmm. Now here's an interesting passage that uh, the pants wearing Baptists or whatever else or the ones that are four women wearing shorts and whatever, they'll try to make this into a thing where uncover the thigh, naked, thy nakedness shall be uh, uncovered. And they say, well, see, it's because the woman's sitting there and she's got a really sort of a short little, you know, skirt or whatever because she's there down on the ground, you know, with her doing grinding with, a, you know, millstone. She's grinding up, you know, different types of wheat, berries or, you know, acorns or whatever kind of thing, trying to make a flower. And she moves her leg a little bit and then people can look down there and they can see nakedness. That's not what the text says. Again, a lot of Baptists will twist this to try and say it's okay. Women can wear shorts or something. Um, hey, really hate to tell you, the Bible has such high standards, you know, especially with today, but uh, that's not what it says. It doesn't say if you, you know, a woman's not wearing underpants or something and she uncovers her thigh, I have to speak very bluntly here, um, she uncovers her thigh and then she moves a little bit and then people can see up and that's not what's going on here. It's saying that the bare thigh 
is nakedness in God's sight. Some woman's walking around with real short shorts on or some kind of short skirt or whatever else, and you can see her bare thigh. God says, I consider that nakedness. I mean, it's going to be something else. When a lot of these modern Christian women get up there and, and the Lord says, uh, why did you walk around naked for all those years out in public? <laughs> Me? I never walked naked. The Lord said, you uncovered your thigh. You wore those shorts all summer long. You were walking around naked. Well, they didn't see my private areas. Of the thigh, nakedness. That's how strict God is. What the text says. That's why I believe a woman should have a long dress or skirt on. I mean, up until, again, in the 1800s, women were ashamed to show their ankles, much less their bare thigh. You look at a lot of the early... Uh, Swimming suits and things of women in the early 1900s, they were short little, you know, skirts or whatever. They, they would wear skirts down to the knee. Why? Because that scripture was still enough in people's minds that they said, hey, uncover the thigh. Oh, that's a bad thing. But we've gotten so pagan and so satanic and wicked now that you actually have Christians, professing Christians, defending wearing shorts. And, you know, the thing of pants as well. Uh, I hate to tell you, but a lot of these pants that women wear, it's basically a thin layer of cloth over top of the naked thigh. There's no, you know, I wonder what her thigh looks like or something like that. I mean, there's no question what it looks like. You can plainly see the outline of her thigh when you're, she's walking around and it, you know, it's gone even beyond jeans now. You got these leggings and whatever else and women walking around and it's just, okay, there's no mystery at all what your lower body looks like. People are so messed up. So, you know, yeah, there's going to be a lot of women that get uh, judged by God for public nudity, walking around naked all the time. But you don't have to believe the Bible. You know, we, just, we, th we take the parts out of the Bible that we like. And the other parts, well, we just kind of say, well, at the time it was good for them, but it, it just it depends on your interpretation now. And we're not really sure what it means in the original context. And maybe we could change the hero in the, in the Greek words and and kind of get a different meaning from it and whatever. Or maybe you could just read the Bible as it is. Yeah, imagine that. Now let's go to the New Testament. Luke chapter 8. I'll show you another good one about the thing of public nudity. And we'll see very plainly that it's not going to it's not going to be a thing of well it was Nudity, public nudity in the past was, you know, in the Old Testament was condemned, but now we're okay with it and we've gone, come so far and whatever else. Uh, no. Luke chapter 8, verse 26 through 27. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time and wear no clothes. Neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. Did you know that uh, devil-possessed people like to take their clothes off? Yes, they call them the streak. Fastest thing on two feet. Ray Stevens had a strong song about that. He's always making the news wearing just his tennis shoes. I remember he used to listen to that as a teenager. Guess you could call him unique. No, you could call him devil-possessed is what you could call him. And why is he running, by the way, if there's no shame there? John chapter 21. This whole thing of this uh, recent debacle with Tractor Supply, you know, sponsoring this disgusting event with uh, these satanic pervert devils going out there and they're, you know, these, oh, I'm a transgendered thing and whatever else, and they're, they're, you know, move, dancing and things with underwear on or whatever else and things. I don't even want to see that stuff. I don't even look into it. And they're doing this in front of a bunch of children. But that, well, that's okay. That's, they're expressing it. No, public nudity is a sign of devil possession. And when you're doing that around children, you are very wicked. You ever, some pervert ever does that around my boy, I'm going to clean his clock. I'm going to tell you that right now. You don't do that in front of my son or my wife. That's why I live out in the middle of nowhere because I avoid these big cities and things with all the wickedness and everything else. 
I wouldn't go near those places. And I pray for the wrath of God to hit them. John chapter 21 and verse 7. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. Hmm. I don't know why he was naked. I don't know what he was doing there, but did he say, oh, it's the Lord? And he said, oh, yeah, well, yeah, he's you know, my master. He knows. I mean, God manifests in the flesh. I think that uh, Jesus knows what Peter's body looked like. He created Peter's body. But even so, here comes the Lord. Oh, oh, oh man, jumps into the sea. It's a natural reaction to be ashamed of your body. It's completely unnatural to say, I feel no shame. I can walk around here. I can go into the showers at the gym and there's a bunch of other guys and I, oh, there's their bodies and everything else. And hey, how you doing there? And, you know, just take a shower myself here and whatever else. And something's wrong there. Something's very wrong. Well, they forced me to do it in the military, Brother Brian. I don't have a choice in the military. Well, then don't go in the military and just say, I object. And show them these scriptures. These are the scriptures that I guide my life by, that I live my life by. I am not going to be publicly naked in front of other people. It's not happening. I fear God. You want to punish me or whatever else? Fine. But uh, I'm not going to be bathing with, with other people. Acts chapter 19, verse 13 through 16. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Why would a devil-possessed man jump on other men and say, and rip their clothes off? Hmm. So that they would flee away and be ashamed. Nakedness is condemned, brethren, in Old Testament and in the New Testament. Second Corinthians chapter 5. You write these scriptures down. You go through this. You write these scriptures down, right? I, well, brother Brian, could you please, exp you know, every sermon you do, could you give us a list of the scriptures and get you? I can't do that, you see, because a lot of times the Lord brings scriptures to my head, which aren't even in my notes, so it wouldn't even work to do that. Uh, and besides, it's you know, brother Brian, could you, you know, spoon feed us for our whole lives or what? No, I'm not going to do that. Different times I've watched videos and things, and I'll sit there and I'll take notes myself. Write your own notes. If there are scriptures that I brought up that you think that aren't relevant or whatever else, then don't write those down. All right? But I'm giving you the scriptures. I put in the work to go through the scriptures, boil the arguments down, and say, here's what the Bible says. Here's what the Bible teaches. If you can find some verses that say that, that nakedness is okay and that public bathing with other people is fine, well, then contradict what I've said. You see how it works? I'm a preacher. I'll take you through the scriptures. But it's your job to do the study beyond this. If you have some situation where you're being forced into public bathing, mixed bathing of some kind, and mixed bathing would be actually men and women together, but you know, a lot of things, it's just men, all men bathing and all women bathing over this way or something. So, but even that, I'm not for that. But um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 through 3, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we, sh we shall not be found naked. Now it's talking about an eternal home in the heavens in terms of your new body, the incorruptible flesh that you get. But there's again a thing there that you don't want to be found naked. Why? Because nakedness is a shame. It's a sin. It's something that's bad and condemned in Scripture. Hebrews chapter 4. Go 
to Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Um, you say, does x-ray vision exist? Oh, absolutely. Right there it is. I can look through this book here and I can see the nakedness that you are. You can do the same thing to me. I'm not saying you can see a picture of you know, a naked body or something. But what I'm saying is I can see past the, the outside and say, I see right through there, there's a wicked body of flesh watching me right now. You say, yeah, and I'm looking back over that Bible of yours and I can see there's a wicked body of flesh behind it too. Amen to that. Yes. <laughs> um, the scriptures undress people. The scriptures make it plain. Somebody comes out and they say, I have no problem with mixed bathing. Well, the Bible says you're a pervert. I have no problem with being nude in public. Then the Bible says you're probably possessed with devils. That's why people hate this book so much. It peels away the layers of their self-righteousness. The Bible looks and sees some drunken bum on the corner that hasn't changed his clothing in a year, and he's there and he's cruddy and filthy and stinky and whatever else, and the Bible says, sinner, removes the clothes. Yep. Sinner laying there. That's right. Um, here comes a man walking towards him in a couple thousand dollar suit. Long, nice coat on and everything else. And gold rings and the best handmade shoes and everything else. Bible looks across and says, takes off the clothing and says, oh, another sinner. And if they don't get saved, they're both going to go to hell. And they're both going to burn the exact same way. Revelation chapter 20. <clears throat> this is when the event happens. All things are naked before the eyes of Him with whom we have to do. And it's talking in context about the Scriptures. But the Scriptures are the Word of God. And Jesus is the Word of God. Manifest Word. Written Word. Jesus is the manifest word. But look at this, Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay. Hell. There it says death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. Okay. Death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Verse 13. All right. Um, I'm going to show you an interesting theory here I have. Go back to Job chapter 26. Hell is before the Lord at that point in time. Job 26. Verse 5. Job chapter 26, verse 5. Dead things are formed from under the waters. The sea gave up the dead which were in them. And the inhabitants thereof. Hell is naked before him. And destruction, destruction hath no covering. He stretcheth out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Hmm. You say, I believe in public bathing. Well, um, and uh, we should feel no shame for our nakedness and while we're bathing with other people. Do you realize you're actually prophesying your own future when you do that? You say, how so? I don't, I don't understand. Hell is naked before God. The inhabitants of hell come up. What do you think? God's given them special suits down there or something? They die. The Bible talks about, you know, when you're born, you're naked. And when you die, you're naked. 
obviously. You don't take your clothes with you when you die. You go down to hell. You're down there. Hell is naked before him. And then you go and you're in the lake of fire with all those other naked people forever. Hmm. Heaven, you want to uh, buy white raiment so that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Make sure that you're not naked. will be clothed upon so that there's no nakedness up there. Heaven is against nakedness. Hell is all about nakedness. Hmm. So, <laughs> kind of an interesting study here, but uh, just wanted to put that thing together. And, uh, you know, uh, never been in an actual sauna. And I'd like to build one possibly on my property, but if I do, it's going to be uh, have some division in it, uh, different rooms and things like that, where it's my son's turn, the one in there, sit there for a few minutes, get nice and warm, all right, when you're done, you come on out, you get washed up over there, and then it's dad and mom's turn, you go out, you're done, you go on out, you play in the snow or whatever else, dad and mom are going in there, no shame between a husband and wife, and we're in there, bathe together, come out, as far as bathing in the sense of in the sauna thing, come out, everything's fine. Um, hey, some people come up to visit and whatever else. Hey, you want to do the sauna thing? Well, yeah, that sounds good. All right, we'll make it so you go first. Put on a bathrobe or whatever else, go on in, take the bathrobes off, bathrobes off, you're in there, we're outside of the building, you get done, you come out, you get cooled off, you dress, whatever else, okay. Well, that felt really good. Praise the Lord. It's our turn. We're going in. Don't come in now. Hey, there's a shower. There's a big couple person shower here and things like that. Would, you know, I need to take a shower. You need to take one at the same time. Okay, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to bathe with other people. I don't want to see other people. You know? Oh, well, it's all just men here. It's all, you know, down at the precinct or down at the base or down at the whatever. It's, we just bathe together. What big deal? To, not for me. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> I have shame for the nakedness. That's one of the reasons I moved up north, too, by the way. I love to live in the north because people cover up. When it's cold and it's snowing, like it's doing right now out here, a little bit of snow falling, um, people don't walk around in their nakedness. You see a little bit of it in the summer, but you know, you get out into the countryside and that goes away rather quickly because of the uh, black flies and the mosquitoes, you know, all that exposed flesh and whatever else. <laughs> Not a very good thing. I like living in a place like this. Um, going near some place like Miami Beach or some other place, Hawaii or some place or whatever else. And I've been to Central America, Costa Rica and whatnot. Um, knew a guy the one time that uh, Married a girl from the Dominican Republic and went to a topless beach. She took him to a topless beach and, oh, it's okay. It's part of our culture down here. And he said it was terrible. Just an absolute terrible thing. You know, looking around and there's women in bathing suits and, oh, there's a woman without a top on. And, okay, I don't need to see this right now. I'm supposed to be with my wife on this honeymoon thing and, and seeing a bunch of naked women walking around and, and almost naked men walking around. Avoid that stuff. Avoid it. If you have a problem with pornography, um, which I know a lot of viewers do have a problem with pornography, then you have to get as, as puritanical as you can. All right, you have a problem, and you need to fight that problem. Uh, stay away from any place where there's public displays of nudity or whatever else. I suggest you move to the north someplace where people bundle up and wear plenty of clothing. Um, and if there's a sauna or, or whatever else in your area, you say, well, I'm part of that. It's part of my culture. Well, good. Praise the Lord. It's, a, I think, a very smart way to detox from things and whatever else. Get a good sweat in and whatever. But uh, make sure you do it in a, in a way that it's private. Okay? So that is going to be it for this study. Um, never preached on this subject before. And uh, as we go into the future, like I said, it's something that we're looking at. The idea of a sauna on our property and so uh, anybody out there have any suggestions I'd love to hear them um, I know that there's a big sauna area out in the Midwest Michigan Missouri 
and uh, Minnesota. Um, I think, or is it Wisconsin? I think it's not Missouri. It's uh, Wisconsin. Michigan, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. And I've heard a lot of the, you know, Finnish, you know, settlers out there and whatever else, they still have a lot of sauna type of things. And actually this book that's written here, um, The Opposite of Cold, uh, those guys are from uh, the uh, Midwest there. So things fall apart here in Maine. We've considered maybe possibly moving out there to that area. Sounds like a really neat area. Um, we've talked about that for a while now, um, but we'll see. I have no idea. I don't know if it's conservative or liberal. If, you, if you're from Minnesota or um, Michigan, Upper Michigan, Upper Peninsula area, whatever else, and, or um, Wisconsin, uh, write it in the comments. I'd love to hear politically. Is it liberal? Is it conservative? Um, what kind of people are out there? Are there many people with sauna type of things? What do people mainly do kind of private sauna things? Or do you see people that are still doing the public nudity stuff? I mean, let me know in the comments. I'd be curious about that. Um, so, and any ideas for building one or whatever else? Um, I have some ideas, but, you know, again, it's, it kind of it goes along with off-grid living. You know, the thing of a, a good sauna, you know, a good place to bathe. We actually have a little place on our property where we used to, it's like a little shed, 12 foot by 12 foot, and we used to bathe in there, and we still use it for doing laundry in the wintertime. And it's kind of another thing that goes along with the sauna culture, and that is, you know, you do your laundry, and then you have a fire going in the stove, and you can dry your laundry pretty quickly in the, you know, in that heat. Um, so... We have already been doing that. I didn't even know that that was sort of a one of the other uses of sauna. So I thought that was pretty interesting in studying the whole thing. Um, but I'd be curious to hear anybody's thoughts on whatever with the whole sauna thing. So we will see everybody in the next study. And again, as always, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching.